Yeah, the, I've been giving the, the charcoal to people at no mm -hmm. cost on the, the, on the understanding I get data back yeah. <laughs> from people who know what they're doing, people who know about growing things. Mm. I was a little bit worried about this because the, the charcoal's pr probably a bit caustic. Um, you know, potash used to be got from charcoal because mm. um, it's highly soluble. If you run water through this, you'd extract um, potassium. And that used to be used to, uh, with nitrates to make um, saltpetre for gunpowder. That was the traditional way of doing it. But anyway, it doesn't seem to have killed. I was a little bit concerned about the uh, about a caustic surface. It, it's um, you know, the uh, well. yeah, lupins are looking happy. <laughs> so, so pretty much you've, you've just mixed it in and that's it? Started planting? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's almost like a magnet then? It's drawing all these different things to it? Yeah, a doing? magnet or, um, or um, blue tech. Right. <laughs> Cause it's like it, a sponge. It, it loosely holds it, yes, mm. yes, yeah. yeah. So it's building up organic matter. Mm. Um, yeah, I've, I, I mean, I, I don't know, I'm, I've no, no training in life science, but yeah, what I'm what I'm getting quite clearly is that um, you can't just mix chicken litter with uh, with charcoal and get the black earth. It's uh, um, there's something special about it. Hmm? Yeah, there's a bit of alchemy to it. Yeah, uh, prob probably many hundreds of years of the best brains in uh, in the Amazon culture. Like, like the, these were these were great cultures. Like Oriana talked about um, um, causeways, um, highways where he could ride ho four horses wide past houses so close together you couldn't fit another one. Like like for many miles, now these these were great centres. You don't get great civilizations without um, no without, without great soil. You know, it was, it was a major engineering achievement to to, um, <clears throat> to have the waterways, the canals on the side, um, and yeah, and and, and the dead straight highways. And it looks like they also they may also have developed a considerable expertise in uh, soil management. It, I suspect it started off accidentally, but um, yeah, they. I guess they know things that we didn't, we don't know now. <laughs> well, we don't know now. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. Right. So in the big picture, this has to, this is a, this needs to be a, uh, a global initiative, but there is the potential to reverse climate change. If this is done on a global scale, um, of the order of, you know, five or eight percent of um, um, biomass, could um, could reverse climate change, and, and that has to be done. Mm. It's not enough just to stop polluting. No. Um, it, it might already be out of control. People, politicians sort of seize on these levels. Yep, aim for that. No, just a simple ra <laughs> rally cry. Reprieves as well, like they're giving everyone reprieves at the moment from taking responsibility. Yeah, well, basically, people don't want don't want responsibility, and the politicians. Um, their job is to make it look as though they're doing something, but not actually doing something. People don't want to make major changes, so please um, make it look as though you're doing something. <laughs> oh, it's it's us. So, and, and we're not going to get a big enough fright until it's too late. But it it it's, it is technically possible. It's just the political will. But there's the the international biochar initiative has this as its aim, and we, we were lucky enough to have... Um, so just, just run through quickly how, how that would work though, so you would get... You'd, everyone would be doing this then? Um, or or large-scale farmers would yes. do it? Yes, professional it's, it's, it's specialists would be doing this. Right. I don't want Joe Bloggs spewing carcinogens yeah, through right. his neighbourhood and but, but he could go and buy or, or go and get yes. some of this. Yes, what he does is that he gets, um, he grows um, an extra thick shelter belt, mm -hmm. maybe coppicing, 
uh, for coppicing like um, poplar or willow yeah. and uh, when the time's right he gives the contractor a call he comes around with his mobile plant mm -hmm. here's my little dream it's not happening yeah. and he um, dries it maybe with solar heat in a tunnel house and then he bungs it in his in his kiln and um, he captures the gas instead of spewing it over the neighborhood he uh, he turns it into electricity or lime mm. um, agricultural lime and uh, maybe even cement a and maybe generates electricity and sells it back to the grid through, through the farmers power line yeah and he, the, the charcoal and the nutrients contained in it go back onto that same farm and he gets um, an inspector comes around and said yep that looks like a ton of charcoal here's your here's your um, your carbon credit yeah. <laughs> and off you go starts again yeah and the farmer pays a premium for the for the service yeah it's all very doable. It's a matter of how, how the... Um, uh, it, it could almost be doable now. Um, and there's, there's new, new processes coming, uh, happening. I get the sense of a very fast-moving field because there's such desperation and, uh, over climate change. Are there countries who are sort of quite a, a bit further more... well, a bit further developed than we are? Um, I don't know. Right. I, I couldn't pick anyone, but... My original contact was from the States. Um, there was an old expert from, <laughs> he's an old, very old man now. Yeah. Um, had a, a, was a bit of a center of knowledge. And, oh, the Indians, yeah, there's, there's an Indian firm was selling charcoal plants, but I, they came out many years ago and um, I don't think they've got any sales. <laughs> So it's a possibility. I think it's a matter of um, the economics flipping around. Yeah, um, yeah perhaps as, as the price of um, um, carbon sequestration um, gets to an appropriate level and the yeah. urgency of climate change is recognized, then uh, it, it, it can happen. And there'll be byproducts of energy and yeah, and increase um, soil fertility, mm. and and maybe a degree of drought proofing. So it's 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 a, it's yeah, it's almost too good to be true, but um, maybe we can make it true. Right. <laughs> so Nortec are trying it out at the moment. Well, it, no, not well, not officially Nortec. No, individual tutors. tutors from Nortec are trying it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, he's been very supportive. Yeah. Um, he is very supportive, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. it's enthusiastic. Yes, yeah. yes, Thomas came out. I had a... Um, yes. Well, I guess his angle is that he sees it as a huge employer. That There's so little work for young people, but this could be, uh, you know, a serious industry because Northland is at the end of a vulnerable power line. We have the potential to um, be self-sufficient in energy. Now, it's, it's hard work planting, raising and planting even poplars. You know, you just chop off branches and bung them in the ground and <laughs> keep walking. But it's, it takes time and effort. Mm. I'm too old for that. And then there's more hard work um, harvesting them. It might have to be done in a mechanised way, but I wouldn't really want that happening on the, on the prime land. Um, so you, we might not be able to get machines in. So I envisage farmers putting it on in gullies and, um, yeah, and, and so anyway, there's, um, there's work for contractors. Mm. 